Okay, today I'm going to teach you how to use QLab to fire queues in the Grand MA running version 3 software. They've done away with MIDI show control, and you can still use MIDI, but as MIDI notes, um, but not as MIDI show control anymore. Um, good and bad reasons, I guess. But it took me a while to figure out how to do this, and uh, some incredible support from ACT Entertainment out of California, um, Aria, Aria, Haley, and Dustin Barnes both uh, were invaluable in making this happen. Super calm, super easy to work with, and just helped me even though I barely know how to even open this software. Um, so we're going to start in QLab, and we're just going to open QLab up. I already have a file open. I've created two queues here. Um, I have a MIDI interface plugged in to my Mac through the USB connection. Um, we need to set that as the output from QLab. And I have it set here as the EMU X MIDI 1X tab out. It's a teeny USB device to MIDI that requires no driver. So it's great for interfacing with light boards and stuff, particularly ones on different operating systems like Mac or PC because they don't need drivers. Um, and that's so that's my output from QLab. I have two queues here. The first one is Q1. I'm using channel one. We have to remember this. Note on has to be set like this. I've chosen my MIDI destination as that output. The message type has to be musical MIDI in this case. Again, not MSC anymore. Um, the note number is going to correspond with the macro that we're going to make in the Grand MA version three software to fire whatever receives note number one. For me to keep it simple, I have note one matched to there, and then I have note two for Q2 as well. Velocity, I've put in at 127. I don't think it matters that much. Um, I'm just doing it that way because I know it works like that. All right, so now let's pop over to the Grand MA software. And I have some cues here that are written and ready to go. Uh, your lighting designer will be able to do this quickly and get this all going and moving. Um, I can just barely crank out a cue here and there. I haven't spent much time on this board and I'm uh, pretty new to it. Uh, so what we need to do first of all is decide how the MIDI is coming into the Grand MA. Um, so we're going to go to hit the little gear here, hit settings, and we want to go on PC settings. And once you get in here, you have different tabs, sound, um, and stuff like that, but we're just going to go to this MIDI section right here, and by default, this will be turned on, I think, This and when it's yellow, it's turned on, and this is the MIDI import on the back of the Grand MA machine, and if you just took that little MIDI, that device that I have, and plugged it directly into that port, had that turned on, that would solve your MIDI in issue. Since I don't actually have a Grand MA in front of me right now, uh, I'm going to instead bring in MIDI through a second MIDI device. So my little USB one I'm using now from QLab is the output, and then I'm going to use a second MIDI device as an input. So I'm connecting my little MIDI cable to the second MIDI device and having that be a MIDI in to the virtual light board I'm running as software. So in that case, we want to turn this off. And we want our MIDI in to be the one I'm using is a Panda Audio MIDI Beam. If you click here, you'll see my other stuff is here available. This is the output from QLab, but that won't help us because this is going out of QLab into nothing. We need to pick this to for this for the EMU to send it into the board via this Panda Audio MIDI Beam. So I'm picking that one. Um, I like to also have MIDI out device here. Um, if you're having trouble, you can use this. Uh, MIDI monitor, it's a great application you should get for troubleshooting. You could also um, have that be your um, your device here as well. If you um, if you had it running, it would show up in here. And you can use that to troubleshoot where stuff's going and, and how it's working. So this should be set correctly. We'll hit this. Now you want to go back to the gear and you go to in and out. And in in and out, the screen that comes up by default will be this DC remotes tab. We're not using that. We're going to use the MIDI remotes. And for each light cue that you want to trigger, you're going to make one of these MIDI remotes. Each line is a different MIDI remote. 
Um, these numbers are arbitrary and are signed just as you start creating them. If I keep adding them down below, it'll just put in the next number. I don't even think you can change that. Um, you can name each, just name it, whatever you want. Again, it's helpful to name it something that'll help make sense to you. Enabled should be yes by default, but you need that to be yes. MIDI channel is the output channel coming from QLab, which is, remember, is one. MIDI index is the MIDI note number. So if you remember, Q1 had MIDI note number one, Q2 had MIDI note number two. You want to tell it that it's a note. There's a lot of options. I think by default, it notes has note attack. Um, so that's, I, you need note set if you're going to be sending notes. You can do control change as an option from that MIDI queue in QLab, and then you would want to pick control. But for what I'm doing here, I pick notes, and you got your note here ready to go. The next, the next uh, field is target, and we'll get back to that in a second. Uh, the other important one is this go plus here. So under key, you need to select go plus, um, which basically tells these cues to go uh, plus run the macro. That's kind of how it's explained to me. So these macros here, I have to create in a different screen, which we'll do in a minute, and you can assign it by right clicking on target. And then you, from these different op tabs here, you pick the one called macro. And then you just pick the one that you've created elsewhere to be to be the what is going to go plus is going to fire. So you can see it's already assigned to pre-show one macro. Um, now we need to get to the macro screen. Um, screens are displayed with this little screen button here. I don't have not I haven't mastered what this exactly does, but I've clicked on this, and these are the different screens available. Um, I believe my stuff is in E4. I think it might be in three. So it's not in there. Um, I think maybe it's here. Nope, let's try E5. There it is. So my macros live on this screen. If you don't see one of these, you can create it by finding a blank screen or a blank space on a screen. And you can click and drag, and it'll give you the option of adding more stuff. Um, the macros appear in the pool tab and under this macros button, which would then create a window like this right here. And each one of these little squares you see are um, macro spaces you could put macros in. The, tan the light gray are ones I've already written macros for, and these darker ones you can add macros as you go. So let's just have a look at uh, pre-show macro one. I'm going to right click on it to edit it. And here, here it is. It's important to name this upper left thing, again, by right clicking on it, something that you'll easily be able to figure out which one that is to assign it. Um, to your MIDI remote um, line there. Um, and again, these numbers here, numbers are arbitrary, just listing the macros in order. You can't put multiple macros in one of all of these. You have to do individual macros for each one, a little tedious. Um, but the important thing here is, again, the name is doesn't matter here, but under command, you just want to type in go to Q1. Uh, the caps doesn't matter. It'll automatically convert that to, uh, to correct for that. But it's critical that go to is one word, space, and then Q, space, and then the Q number in your Q list that you want to fire. And then follow yes, no, yes, the wait, enable, add to command line, and execute, all are just fine as defaults. So I did that for him, and I did it for every single Q in my in my queue list that I need. So we're good there. So now we're, let's test it and see, see how we did. Um, the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to open this little, this little circle with three dots, um, reveals sort of my, my queues here, and it kind of shows you what is running, what isn't running. Um, me hitting go plus here, I would just fire through this list, I believe. Yeah, you can see it just goes through the list, right, and, and fires those different guys there. So right, what we're really going to do is we're going to go go plus, but it's going to be controlled by a macro, and then hopefully controlled uh, from QLab. All right, so let's bring QLab up, and we'll scooch him off to the side there. Uh, so if I fire Q1, it should. Um, I'm going to move this down here. Just whoops. Uh oh. There we go. I'm just going to go go plus a couple times to get it away from Q1 so you can see it fire. Okay, so now if I hit go, it fires Q1. And if I hit go, 
it fires Q2. Um, the way I have this set up with the macros there allows you to jump around between queues. So if I had all this other stuff, like for example, I could go from Q9 right to Q4 over to Q14 um, that way. You could have it if you're just trying to go through a sequence. Um, you could have made your macros. Um, let me see if I can get back to the macro screen here. Doop. So instead of having target be a macro, I could have picked sequence. And this would allow me to select my queue list here. And then um, that would let me go through the sequence itself. So each one of these things would, would just go next, next, next. And you wouldn't have to write all those other um, MIDI remote queues. However, again, I've, I'm trying to target a very specific queue at a specific time. Um, there's one other thing I wanted to comment on. Um, oh, I know what it was. So it's super helpful in these situations when you're trying to understand what's happening. Not only is um, MIDI, MIDI monitor uh, external application super helpful, um, but also uh, a program that, um, oops, I'm just trying to make open another screen here. So we get a blank, here we go, I can put it right here. You can put in a, a, one of these <clears throat> one of these screens here, just a second, system monitor, which will show you what's coming in to the machine and help you understand if stuff is arriving. So for example, if we look at, I'm gonna just open this up just a hair. And if we go back to QLab here, let's see if I can resize this thing. Um, if you go to QLab and I fire these, you should be seeing, you could see, right? Uh, the MIDI notes comes in, right? Channel one, press, note one, velocity 127, and then it's fired the go to Q1 command. So you can see that it's functioning and working and all that stuff. All right. Uh, it was super fun learning it. Again, a big shout out to my friends at uh, Act Entertainment uh, for really helping me out. They're, they're incredible support and uh, patient. So 